你而家收睇嘅系加拿大财经一号电视台。家国地产发展趋势，近期楼市最新动态，地产行业权威发布，众多专家分析点评，尽在置业家国。Hello everyone, welcome to Real Estate Canada. On today's show, we are going to cover a very unusual topic relates to real estate. Unfortunately, around 40% of Canadian marriages end in divorce. Since separation is a delicate situation, it's very important for realtors to use their expertise to make this transition as smooth as possible. And today we are going to discuss some useful information about divorce and real estate. Hi, Michael. Hi. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, usually, when we had a specialist on real estate, it, it means like commercial or residential, or some people um, more familiar with one neighborhood or area. But you are very special. Then why don't you tell uh, our audience your specialty is? Thank you for calling me very <laughs> special. I, I am unique. I do specialize in different things. Um, you know, people often say, uh, "What area do you work in?" Like you said, and, mm -hmm. and my answer is usually, "I don't." choose where I work, I choose who I want to work with. And that's not to mean that anybody is better or worse to work with. It's just that I, I got into this business when I specialized in certain aspects of real estate. And that's transitioned into other aspects of specialties. And that generally takes me, my whole business is referrals. But the thing really attracted my attention is when I saw your YouTube channel called The Divorce Minutes. And the then divorce. you said you are very special on divorce real estate. I, I'm, to my knowledge, I'm Ontario's first divorce real estate specialist. Yeah, that's what so, I what I heard. Yeah. Now I do have to be clear because I, I don't want to get in trouble. So maybe I'll just tell you really quickly how I we figured that out. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can tell you in a minute how I got into specializing. Uh, one of my specialties is, of course, people going through divorce, selling the matrimonial home. Mm -hmm. But um, and that that came about through a referral, and I can tell you an exciting story about how that came to be. But then ultimately what happened was I wanted to start marketing myself more to them. I hadn't done marketing and I hired a marketing expert to, to help me and we did research and what we found was in the United States there's a designation that real, realtors can, can pay for and um, take courses and they're divorce real estate specialists. Mm -hmm. So I said to the marketing specialist, uh, the marketing expert, I said, well that's what I've been doing for the last four or five years. We just don't have a designation here in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So it's not a recognized um, credit yet with the Real Estate Association. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to be specific about that, but it is one of the specialty areas of my practice that I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we just want to ask a very general question. So how sure. is the uh, divorce real estate um, different from other clients? Why are you feel this is, can be a specialty area to work on? Well, there, there, there's a lot of specialized knowledge that you need to know, which mm -hmm. is why uh, the short answer, and then I'll give you the <laughs> long answer. The short answer is there's a lot you need to know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to give you an idea of how, I, I didn't choose to be a divorce real estate specialist or focus on that sector. You know, some people say, well, where's the money? Let's go for it type of thing. And I'm not about the money. I mean, I like to make money like anybody else, but I'm all about helping people. Um, what really happened was I was at a business networking event and uh, a lady came up to me and said, this is going back about five years ago, mm -hmm. and a lady came up to me and said, I really need you to help my friend. I said, okay, but she says, but she's about 30, 35 minutes north of here, would you drive that far? I said, well, I go wherever I have to to help people. I said, what's the situation? She said, um, well, my friend got cancer uh, about a year ago. Her husband left her. They've, um, th she, he's not giving her any money to feed their four children. Um, they have a custom built home and uh, I said well does she have equity in the home yes I said well it sounds like she needs to sell it and she says yeah I said okay so let's go see her next week mm -hmm. and this lady that was talking to me said no you don't understand um, the bank has sent her notice that they're forcing power of sale they're taking the house in two to three months I said oh. okay let's get in the car and let's go right up there um, now usually realtors when you show up at some a potential clients new house you have a you know what's called a listing presentation here's why you should hire me mm -hmm. well I wasn't prepared and generally I like to people to feel trust and rapport with me to work with me not because I have a fancy presentation mm -hmm. not that there's anything wrong with it it's just that's how I do it so this lady and I got in, in, into my car we drove up to uh, to Innisville and I went in to see this potential client and I could see she was crying and she was going for chemotherapy and um, you know, all, everything that, that I heard was true. And I said to her, 
I could tell you about my credentials, I could tell you about my education, I could tell you about my skills, but you don't care. You, what you care about is what I can do for you. So what mm -hmm. do you need from me? And she said, I need two things. So I got a blank piece of paper and pen and I said, okay, number one. She said, I need my house sold. And I said, but I'm a realtor, isn't that why I'm here? And she says, no, you don't understand. And this is where you really get to know people and compassion comes in. Mm -hmm. And she said, I've had two realtors try to sell the house and they were unsuccessful. I said, um, and, she said uh, and she said, not only do I need the money, but I was born and raised in this town. It's a small town. I'm going to beat the cancer. I'm going to live a long, healthy life. And I don't, want the re I don't want the town to know that the bank took the house. I don't want everybody to always talk behind my back. She's the one who lost her house to the bank. She said, I don't care if I get money out of the sale. I want a red sold sign. So now I understand what's important to her. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, well, I know why the other two... Um, attempts were unsuccessful, no disrespect to the realtors, but I know I can sell this house, I'm 100% uh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, and I said, what's the second thing? And she said, well, I'm afraid of my husband. He's not quite an ex yet, they were in the divorce process. I said, okay, well, what do you mean are you, you're afraid? Is he afraid physically? She said, he's physically abusive, mentally abusive, emotionally abusive. She started crying. It was a really sad situation. And um, I said, okay. Um, and I said, so, but that's the, I said, I can help you with that. I'm not a police officer. I'm not a bodyguard or anything like that. I said, but with regards to selling the house, I can help you with that. She said, really? How? I said, do you have a picture of him? She says, sure. I said, can I have it? She gave it to me. I said, well, usually when agents list a house, they put a lockbox on the door and then other buyers, potential buyers will come with their agent. That's right. And I said, um, I'll just put in the MLS listing and I'll notify my, my front office whenever somebody books an appointment, that I must be here for all showings. Mm -hmm. I said, now that I know what he looks like, if he shows up, I'll refuse entry. And if he doesn't leave, I'll call the police. And she said, you'll do that for me? I said, I do whatever is necessary in every unique situation for every unique client. Mm -hmm. And of course, she started crying. She gave me a, she said, can I give you a hug? I said, let's, you know, let's get this house sold. It was all good. And sure enough, um, and then I said, I need, um, and I had dealt, dealt with a divorce sale at that point in my career. And um, I said, by the way, usually when clients get offers, they'll look at me and say, do you think, this was before multiple offers, mm -hmm. so people were offering a little bit less than asking. <coughs> and um, they'd always look at me as the realtor and say, well, do you think we should take it? Well, if the bank's taking, I need extra knowledge here. So I said, I need your lawyer's, uh, do you have a lawyer? Yes. I said, I need your lawyer's number because I need to know how much your lawyer needs and how much the bank needs so that I don't advise you to take something and then there's a, a loss. She said, wow, no other realtor ever asked me that. I said, well, you know, I'm trying to think about the whole picture. So I called up the lawyer and he told me that number um, and I got that number. So anyway, we, through the process, make a long story short, we did have um, several showings. We had three or four offers come in that were about $50,000 below what the bank needed, mm -hmm. but I don't give up. And then we, um, her ex-husband did call me and scream and yell at me on the phone and I dealt with it in a very professional manner. Then I went to a showing, and, uh, and here I am, just a realtor trying to give good service and sell a house, and uh, I open the front door, I go and I turn on, all, she goes out, and I turn on all the lights, and I make everything look, she's hiring me to sell her house. Mm -hmm. So I'm making everything look perfect, and I open the door, and there he is, the ex-husband with his realtor, because he can't come without a realtor. So, like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. I'm also, one of, my, one of the skills that I hired, uh, that I took um, in my investor days, was um, I'm a trained negotiator, which I got I thought would only apply to money and to you know making say you know making money, but it also has served me well in dealing with people. Mm -hmm. It's really the art of communicating, and um, so I stepped outside, closed the door behind me, and I crossed my arms and I just said, um, "You can't come in." He said, "You can't refuse entry." I said, "I can because my client has advised me to do that, and you're not getting past me." He said, "Are you threatening me?" I said, "I'm not threatening you." I'm standing here carrying out the wishes of my client. I'm going to ask you nicely to leave, and if you don't, I'm going to call the police, and I motioned for my phone. And he was screaming and yelling, and usually when ego kicks in, people get defensive, but I keep ego aside, and like I said, I'm trained in dealing with people, so I just let him vent and say his piece. And slowly but surely, he was backing up. So I figured as long as he's leaving, good. And we had four or five offers that were about $50,000 below what she needed. Finally, I'm there for a showing, and somebody comes in, 
And I could see that he didn't want to buy the place to live in. He wanted to fix it and sell it. They had an indoor pool and there was some mold and other stuff, but because I knew that language, I said, you know, if you do this, 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 and this, you could probably get 30,000 more and you could sell. We were talking the same language. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we ended up getting an, an offer. I said, here's what we need, et cetera, et cetera. We were negotiating. I got her an offer with a three week closing, mm -hmm. um, no conditions, and about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 over what the bank and the lawyers and everybody needs, so at least you could walk away with a little bit of money. Wow. But when you sell a matrimonial home, there's some laws that apply, and it's called, one, of, one for example, uh, is called spousal consent. Mm -hmm. You can't just go and sell a house if you've lived in that as your marital home without the spouse's signature and consent. Mm -hmm. And um, the spouse wouldn't sign. Definitely, you know. Right, he didn't want her <laughs> he to sell the house and he just wanted her to be miserable. Yeah. So I called up her family lawyer and he um, wasn't sympathetic. He didn't know how to handle it or what to do and I don't know why. I mean, just like realtors, lawyers, insurance brokers, financial, everybody, there's great ones, there's average ones and there's not so good. <laughs> so I don't know who, you know, doesn't matter who the lawyer was, but he really just didn't seem focused on getting this deal done. So I called my client and I said, um, if it's going power of sale, it's not at the bank, at the branch anymore, it's the bank's lawyers. Mm -hmm. She said, how did you know that? I said, well, you know, as an investor, I used to sell power of sale properties and things like that. I said, do you have the number of the lawyers for the bank? She said, yes. I said, can I have it? So I called up the lawyer for the bank and I said, um, here's what I have. I said, according to the laws, um, when you force power of sale, you have to sell a house at fair market value. So you're going to list the house with whatever realtor your bank chooses mm -hmm. and you're going to get four, I have four or five bona fide offers here that say you're going to take a $50,000 loss. Or I have an offer here where it'll be off your books in three weeks, paid in full and you lose nothing. Which would you prefer? She says, well, of course we prefer the second. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, here's the problem. I'm not a lawyer. You are. She wasn't a family lawyer, but she was a lawyer. And I said, problem is I can't get spousal consent. This offer dies in 48 hours. There's only 48 hours for us to make a decision. We need to save this deal. She says, I'll call you back in five minutes. She calls me back in five minutes and she said, okay, I just checked with a family lawyer I know. The spouse cannot withhold spousal consent unless he, has he or she has cause, unless there's a justified reason. Mm -hmm. So she filed an emergency motion. Now we're getting into the whole family law act mm -hmm. thing. Um, she fired, filed an emergency motion with the courts, judge heard it, and awarded the sale without his consent. So if a judge awards it, it's good to go. So what I learned from that experience was dealing with exes, dealing with hostile people, dealing with banks, dealing with family lawyers, and selling a house. And like I said, I didn't choose that as a, as a way to get into the biz or something to focus on. What, I, what happened was when you'd give that kind of service to somebody, they tell other people. Mm -hmm. And she went out and I, I guess she started telling other people that, that I wasn't only skilled at what I do in real estate, but I, I really cared and had compassion for what she was going through and I had her back. The other thing when people go through divorce, and at that point I was married, um, so I didn't understand this, but when people go through divorce, they have a lot of fear, anxieties, trust issues, and more often than not, they don't trust that their spouse or ex is going to try and steal some money, make a deal under the table type of, of thing, right? So they know that because of my integrity, not only would I, I catch that, but I would not allow it. And especially if you're my client, I've got your back and I'll protect you. And everybody wants to trust you and everybody wants to feel safe. Mm -hmm. So that just turned into a business where referral after referral came um, in the divorce sector. And so you asked me what's different. I know there's a long answer, but now what's different Okay. <laughs> What's different is not only as a realtor, mm -hmm. do you have to be able to be a liaison with the lawyers and I'm not a lawyer, but speak some of the language, um, know more of the laws that apply to selling a matrimonial home. Um, often we have people that are hostile and can't be in the same room together. Mm -hmm. So I have to be willing to see people in two different places. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have to record the conversation to make sure that the same things are said by me to d both parties. Sometimes I take diligent notes because I have to testify in court. Last week I was at a lawyer's office signing an affidavit swearing that every, my, my real estate opinion mm -hmm. about the property was unbiased and not in favor of either client. So there's a whole lot of legal issues. But then there's the, it's a different way of negotiating when you get an offer. If people know that they're, they're splitting up, they're going to lowball offers. Mm -hmm. It's a different way to negotiate it. So there's a lot of differences. 
Wow, what when, a when great to, story. Yeah, and, you know? yeah, and yeah. yeah, everybody said a great story is better than a thousand words from the textbook. Well, I think that then, was a thousand <laughs> words, but, but it is a great story. No, textbook, yeah. from it, textbook, yeah, yeah wow. Yeah, yeah. I know, like during um, the divorce process, a lot mm. of people are having like emotional um, like breakdown, or mm. and uh, you can see a lot of human nature through the whole process. Yeah. And I was gonna ask this question by the last, but I wanna bring okay. it up. Uh, so what is what are the, uh, like, like common mistake that people usually make during the process. There's a cup. There's two at the same time. When people decide to split up, whether you're male or female, or or same-sex marriage, wh whether you initiated it or you're the recipient of the news, or it was mutual, mm -hmm. the fact is is that every spouse, both spouses, will go through extreme emotions, fears anger and all, all sorts of emotions and thoughts and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And when you're going through such a difficult, often traumatic, volatile time, your, your judgment is clouded. And at, at the very least, when, you know, one thing that I've learned is people don't know how to hire. People aren't trained mm -hmm. to hire. Mm -hmm. So the problem is when you're dealing with emotions, because that's what drives us to do everything, very often, um, you know, one of, one of my best pieces of advice is get the best advice from the beginning. But unfortunately, when people split up and they're going through that turmoil and all of that emotion, they wait until, I'll give you an example in my case. No one said to me for about six months, did you change your life insurance policies? You have to update your beneficiary. Well, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Somebody a, a couple of months later said, did you change your will? Because right now, if something happens to me, everything goes, you know, to my ex. Um, there's lo my favorite saying is you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, even though you're dealing with all the emotions, my advice is get the best professional advice, whether it's about the terms, legal terms, financial, you name it. Get the best advice from the beginning because you'll avoid costly mistakes, you'll avoid further stress, mm -hmm. um, and, and get the proper advice from the professionals um, that can give that. Um, and so that, I mean, that's the, mis the biggest mistake people make is they will hire a realtor or a financial planner or a lawyer. Myself, I switched lawyers mid-divorce. So did my ex. Most of my clients hire, fire one or two lawyers before they end up being happy with one. I'm not putting down lawyers. I'm not putting down anybody. It's a question of not feeling fit or comfortable, but they just hired somebody quick because they needed them. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, if I may, there, there's actually a new organization um, that um, just amazing. It's called Divorce Specialist Group. Mm -hmm. uh, their website is divorcespecialistgroup.com, I believe. And what it is is, you know, we were talking before we came on camera how nobody specializes in helping people go through divorce. There are lots of great realtors. There are a lot of great financial planners. There are a lot of great lawyers. There are a lot of great therapists, coaches, counselors, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. But who specializes in what you're going through when you're going through divorce? And this organization is very new. They've, they, they've only been around for less than a year. But um, I happen to know personally because I've sent a lot of referrals to people in the group, my clients. And that's one of the other things as a real estate specialist, because it's a real estate show, is people will say, okay, you know, I, I've gone to sell houses where people can't get up in the morning and go to work because they're crying. Well, mm -hmm. they need a good, counsel, good counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I, we, we often hear people who are going through divorce now, now they're gonna, one of them is going to work with me to either buy or rent their next place to live. Mm -hmm. Well, if they can't um, qualify, especially with the mortgage rules changing, if they can't qualify, um, the mortgage broker is going to need um, to know about the spousal support payments and things like that to qualify for income. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all heard about the, the spouse that owes spousal support and child support and doesn't pay, mm -hmm. can't pay, loses their job, whatever the case may be. So here's something I learned. Uh, and I didn't know this. I met with this life insurance um, broker that's part of this divorce specialist group. And she told me, she said, you know, you should tell your clients, did you know that you can get insurance so that if the ex doesn't pay the support, at least you don't go without feeding your kids or miss a mortgage payment? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And I've been divorced four years. Why didn't anybody tell me that? Because my insurance broker before this person didn't specialize in people going through divorce. Mm. So now all of my clients, whether they need life insurance or support payment insurance. Um, every family lawyer can facilitate a divorce uh, deal, but I happen, the I happen to know the lawyer in this group because I've referred people to her. 
doesn't care about billable hours. She cares about the best outcome for the client. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a financial planner in the group that um, when you sit down with somebody and they're what I call suddenly single, it's a whole different conversation than when mm -hmm. you and your husband or you and your wife are doing something, right? And now if your assets have been cut in half, um, is all, you, you have to specialize in that type of guidance, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, well, I need somebody to talk to for you know, mental health and, and, and psychological issues. So any type of therapist, psychotherapist, counselor, I mean, there's lots of different terms and qualifications. Somebody, I happen to know the lady in this group specializes in helping people going through divorce. Mm -hmm. So part of be, my value as being a real estate divorce specialist is um, not just selling your house and not just the laws that apply to real estate, but making sure you are protected, whether it's your will, whether it's your insurance, and, and there's nothing in it for me to refer you to these people or anybody else you want to work with other than knowing you're getting the best service and the best protection and peace of mind possible. Mm -hmm. But then you just mentioned that a lot of people are not um, familiar or know how to hire professions. Mm -hmm. What do you mean on that point? Well, yeah, it's something we're not taught in schools um, and generally our parents weren't taught. So we hire people either because they have great, mar like I said, they have great marketing, a lot of signs in the area or they door knock or they, they do postcards or, or whatever the case may be. People have a lot of choices. There are over, for example, in the real estate business, I mean, when you're going through divorce, you need all sorts of professionals. Mm -hmm. But in the real estate business, there's over 50,000 licensed realtors, I believe now, on the Toronto Real Estate Board in the greater Toronto area. And uh, I actually wrote a book. I, I, I brought a copy for you. <laughs> it's called Choose Your Realtor Carefully. Mm -hmm. And the subtitle Separate the Best from the Rest Before You Hire One. Now, this book isn't about self-promotion. I, um, I didn't write this book. Um, be, you know why I'm the best and why you should hire me. That's not what it's about. It's not a biography, right? <laughs> no. no. What I learned, in fact, uh, the business I was in before I mm -hmm. was in real estate investing was in human resources and hiring and profiling people for proper job fit. Mm. That's where I learned that people don't know how to hire. So you say, I want to replace you know, the floors in my kitchen. Who do you recommend? Um, who was your realtor? Who was your lawyer? So sometimes it's a referral, mm -hmm. and that's okay. But it doesn't mean if you're going through divorce, they specialize in divorce, mm -hmm. right? Um, so generally when you hire, so people will just say, well, they have a lot of marketing in the area or, you know, um, Jackie recommended this person. Well, still, okay, that's a good reason to interview. But the problem is a lot of people skip the interview process, whether mm -hmm. you interview one person and you're sold or you interview two, three, four. So when I wrote this book, it's all about some of the things to be careful of when you're interviewing, because this is real estate specific, mm -hmm. so, some of the things to be careful of when you're interviewing realtors and what they may tell you and you know, how that applies to you. And it's funny, when I wrote the manuscript, I, I, I asked uh, one of the lawyers that I refer the real estate deals to, I said, can you read it? He said, this is great. There's so much information here that the public doesn't know. He said, but the problem is you didn't tell them how to fix the problem. <gasps> so I went back and I edited it and um, it actually, it, it, here, so it says the bonus, 18 interview questions mm. to ensure that you hire a superstar realtor. That's what I'm going to say, you know. Yeah. A lot of people just don't know what kind of question they're going to ask. Yeah. They know what they need, but they what kind of... They don't know what they what, don't know. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I added, uh, I came up with 18 of what I believe are the most important questions. So again, as a hiring expert in my past career, my advice is whether you're going to interview one person and you really like that person, you're going to hire them, or you're going to interview two or three, ask the same questions of everybody because how can you compare apples to apples? That's right. And then, so what I did was I provided the questions because most people may not know what questions to come up with. And then the lawyer said to me, well, how do they know what a good answer is? So I went Thank back. back. <laughs> I went back and I said, here's an example of a, an answer, in my opinion, would be it not not applicable, not a good answer for your needs. Do you have an example for that? Absolutely. From the book? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I wrote the book, so I can give you an example of any of them. Um, well, so for example, a lot of people will ask, um, do you have a team? Often if you drive around now, you see, uh, uh, or you get postcards very often, it'll be the, um, the John, you know, John Doe Realtor, Jane Doe Realtor, mm -hmm. or it could be John Smith real estate team. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that if you have a big team, that means you're more successful and capable of doing more. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. You're still hiring the individual. The question is, mm -hmm. how do you, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, use your team? How do you leverage your team to your client's advantage? Mm -hmm. So a good, uh, so again, to expand on that, I say, if, some, uh, if a realtor uses a team, now, so if you're selling your million dollar house, 
you don't want to hire somebody because you think they're the best and you're happy with them, and then they, they give you, you know, somebody else that may only be in real estate for three or four months, no disrespect, they just need some experience, is now negotiating your deal because the person you hired is busy. Mm -hmm. That's not what you want. What you want, whether I have a team or not, is irrelevant. If I'm accessible to you, mm -hmm. is relevant. And if I'm the one that's working on your deals when we get offers, or if I'm the one following up to get mm -hmm. deals, get offers, you're hiring me for my skills. Whether I have a team or not, if they're in the back end, that's, that's leveraging my time. But you're hiring me, not, yeah, it's like not being, somebody else. Um, being um, clear mm -hmm. on who is doing what kind of work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's an example of just because somebody says, oh, I have a team with 10 people. Okay, but how does that benefit you? Mm -hmm. Specifically, how do you use the team? Mm -hmm. Because that might be a wrong answer or right answer type of thing. Right. Thank you so much, Michael, yeah. for coming today. Thank you. Well, we have a really good talking. Thank, Thank you. you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.